it's Ariana from Scale and Simplify. And in this video, I'm going to talk about lists and tags and how to set them up inside of Kartra. Now, just a side note, I am sharing lots of tips and best practices for organizing lists and tags in general. So even if you're not a Kartra user, you can definitely stick around and listen in on those because they will apply to virtually any email marketing system out there. So first, I just want to for a second talk about the difference between lists and tags. People get confused as to which one is best to use when. There's no right answer, but there's some guidelines that I like to typically follow for somebody who has like a course and coaching business model. Um, so for lists, you can think of lists as like a broad category, broad buckets where you place your contacts into. And the three that I always use, and sometimes there's additional ones, but these are like the core three, is all subscribers, newsletter subscribers, and customers. So all subscribers is just that, everybody who is subscribed, who is within the system. Um, and this is just to have like a catch-all bucket of everyone so that nobody's like hanging out without being inside of a list because that can happen in Kartra and other systems as well. So you just want to make sure that you're accounting for everybody who is in the system who is subscribed. And then newsletter subscribers are the people who are on your regular communications list. This is where you would put people if they have opted in for a freebie or subscribe to your newsletter in some way. Um, or if you um, put purchasers right into that list, then you would include those as well. And then customers are people who have purchased anything from you at any given point. So to create a list, I'm just going to click on the green button and I'm just going to call it example. So this here is your, like for internal references, what you want to name your list. The public description, you need to word carefully. Um, so this is something that will appear for people if they, at the bottom of your emails, if they click on edit your settings or unsubscribe, it's going to take them to a page that shows them all of the lists that they are subscribed to. And so you want to avoid, you know, using any terminology that you wouldn't want to be public facing. And you also want to kind of be a little bit descriptive in that so that when they are deciding if they want to unsubscribe from everything or maybe from just one of the lists, they can kind of understand what the difference is between them. Okay, next. And then that's it. You can just go back to the list or import these at that point. And I'm just going to go back because that's all that we're going to cover in this particular video. Okay, so now we see our new list here at the top. Now, I'll talk about tags in a moment, but I also just want to show you some automations that you might want to put in place so that these lists kind of manage themselves for you. So two things that should be standard practice for you are that when you're creating a form, any sort of opt-in, that within the settings of that form, you put people onto the newsletter subscribers list. Um, and then when you're creating your products, any purchase that people make in the settings of that, you want to put people on the customers list. So those are the two ways that people are going to come in typically. But then we want to also make sure that when somebody is added to one of these lists, they also get added to all subscribers automatically. And that if you choose to do it this way, um, if somebody makes a purchase, that they also get added to the newsletters newsletter list. So that in Kartra, we're going to do through automations. So up here in communications, you're going to go to automations. Okay, then you're going to click on create new automation, big green button. So first, let's do the one 
where the scenario is somebody has subscribed to the customer's list because they have just purchased something. So we want to make sure that if they're a new buyer, like it could be somebody who's not on your newsletter list who has come in and purchased something, we want to make sure that they are also placed on your newsletter and on the all subscribers list. Okay, and subscribe to the list. Newsletter subscribers. Okay, so I'm going to click save, but what you would do for the second one is just create a second automation where up here you select lead subscribes to list newsletter subscribers, and the then would be subscribe to list all subscribers. Okay, and I'm going to also write this down below the video so that you have it all outlined in a checklist. Um, but just think about kind of covering all your bases and making sure that everybody for one is always on the all subscribers list. And also that no matter where somebody comes from, um, they're being put into the newsletter at some point. Um, now, if you just in a, like an exception to this is if you have some sort of nurture sequence or anything um, being sent to new purchasers, new customers, and you don't want them to receive like newsletters in the meantime, you can make this automation a little more straightforward and then add people to the newsletter subscribers list once they have finished their customer welcome sequence. Um, and I will talk about that in another video. But these are just kind of the, the basics to make sure that people are just at least on one list and that you have a catch-all list for everyone. All right, so I'm gonna go back to leads and then tags. So tags, like I was saying, this is where you can get a little bit more specific than the lists. The tags is where you're going to really track what people do. Um, so that you can segment them further. So the categories, if you hover over to the right hand side and go to categories, this is one thing that I really love about Kartra um, is just everything is categorized. <laughs> and so it's easy to find things. But these are the key categories that I like to use. Internal, this is like anything where you want to have a one time trigger or just behind the scenes processes and any tags associated with that, I put that in a category called internal. Um, cart abandons is another one. Uh, we like to apply tags for any cart abandons within the product, and I like to keep that in a separate category. Purchases is for all your purchases. Um, this was just an example. Behavior is just that, <laughs> anytime you wanna track any sort of behavior. So for example, if you are tagging people when they open an email, um, if you're tagging people when they click on particular links in your emails, when they view certain pages, anything that you're tracking about someone's behavior when it comes to the content that you are sending out through Kartra, that would go into that category. And then freebies is the last one. This is, um, you can call it whatever you call freebies, <laughs> um, lead magnets, whatever it might be. This is where you have those entry points and the tags associated with those. Okay, so I'm just going to create another category as an example. Okay, so this is just for your internal use, so you don't need to worry about what it's called or, or anything like that and it's that simple okay and then if we go over into tags i'm going to show you just some naming conventions and why those make things much simpler um, 
So keep in mind that, you know, there's various places within the system where you're going to interact with like a drop down menu that has a list of tags. And selecting them from those drop down menus is just going to be a lot easier if they have, if, like, if they're structured in similar ways where you know to look for certain chunks of, of tag name. So I'm going to give you an example. So clicked, and then the thing that they clicked on. And then I always put a, a dash in between them. And so it's just easier to find in a list. And it also is informative. Like it, it tells you what, what it was and what action they, they took. Okay, and then same thing with opt-in, and then you would put the name of your opt-in. Okay, so I'm gonna make another example tag. Click on tags and a tag name. We're gonna say it's for the purchases, purchase, product name. And you can even do this, um, like if you were launching at a specific time, you might wanna put a date on it. Um, or if you are, for example, running a webinar, you want to put any sort of indicators where you can get as specific as possible so that later, if you want to retarget anyone or just see for your own metrics, you can figure that out pretty quickly by um, searching for the, the proper numbers or whatever you put as the indicator. Okay, you can also put a tag description so you can get even more specific on that. So here we can put in something like that so that you know what tag this when this is applied. Okay, and then we're going to select our category. And in here, actually, I just want to say too, it doesn't have to be the, the tag name doesn't have to be in the description. So you can also say like, make notes to yourself. Like that, anything that you think would be helpful to you. Um, you can also color code them for fun. Um, and it makes it easier to find them in the list too. Like if you, you know, want to make all purchase tags green, then it is easier to just look for them in the tags view. Okay, and then the last thing is that you can set an expiration date. So for example, if there's a tag that you know you're using temporarily like for a month or whether it's a temporary trigger tag or for whatever reason, you know that you will no longer need to have that tag in your system after a certain period of time, then you can expire it automatically. And this helps just keep things a little bit more clean. So create. And that's it. Now we see our new tag and it is green and it's in the purchases category. Um, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it helps. Again, check out below the video. There will be a checklist of all of the things that I've covered so that um, you have it for quick reference as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click like below and subscribe to our channel for more tips on scaling and simplifying your online business. If you know someone else who would benefit from this video or similar ones, share it with them as well. Thanks for watching.